Hello everyone, welcome to our next installation of chemistry today. Today we're going to be talking more about equilibrium and things that can affect it. So the last notes we took, we talked about things like uh, temperature and concentrations and things like that that can speed up a reaction. And today we're going to talk about how that can affect the system as a whole. So we have number uh, 36 here. So as you could probably guess, the balance in a chemical system is pretty delicate. So for it to do its reaction, remember it needs to be at an equilibrium. Things, uh, what we have at the beginning of a reaction needs to be there for the end of a reaction. And it can be disrupted very easily. And so to adjust, um, it goes through a process to restore equilibrium. So it's kind of like with us, humans are the same way whenever we have uh, a change happen in our lives it can kind of mess up our lives uh, kind of change everything and so we change things to restore equilibrium and chemical reactions nuclear reactions things like that do the same exact thing Okay, so this leads us to something called Le Chatelier Principle. So this is number 37 and 38. Now, Le Chatelier was a French scientist, and it makes me cringe whenever I hear people pronounce it wrong. My French ancestors get deeply offended. It's not Le Chatelier, okay, <laughs> Le Chatelier. Um, but he came up with a principle that basically says that if there's any stress applied to a system, the system is going to change to relieve the stress. So in our personal lives, so maybe for example, just this crazy coronavirus thing, um, it has changed everything. So for me personally, uh, I have started to, um, to deal with, you know, the stress and being stuck at home all the time, I started to go on a lot more walks and I've spent a lot more time outside just to kind of relieve some of that stress dealing with the situation that we're in currently. Um, or for some of you procrastinators or whatever, you might feel stressed before uh, you have a big project due because you put it off and so you, you do the project so that you can relieve that stress. Same exact idea when dealing with reactions. In reactions, uh, the things that can upset the equilibrium is the concentration of the reactants or products. So if you have too much of a reactant or a product, uh, changing the temperature and changing the pressure. So all those things can affect the um, change it, or can affect the equilibrium. And I totally agree with changes in temperature. I do not like really hot weather and I do not like really cold weather. So Las Vegas is a little rough with the summer. It's very hot. <laughs> so I don't like that much. Um, so first thing we're going to talk about is concentration. So this is 39 and 40. So changing the amount um, will disturb the equilibrium, right? So if you have too much of something or too little of, of something, then it will disrupt the equilibrium. So the system will adjust, of course, to minimize the effects of the change. So let's say, for example, here we have um, an equation and we can see it is a reversible reaction. It's got those double arrows. So um, how do we know which reaction will be more favored is by, for example, looking at the concentration. So if we increase the concentration of A, so if we add a lot more A, it's going to, the equilibrium, the reaction is going, the, sorry, the forward reaction is going to be favored um, because it shifts away from the high concentration, okay? So if there's too much A here, it's going to cause all this stress on this left side, and so it's going to shift, and we'll see more of a forward reaction happening, kind of shifting away from the concentration. But let's say, for example, what if we decreased C? Yeah, let's say we decreased C, uh, we took away a lot of it, then it's unequal again. So we have too much on this side, too little on this side, so it is once again going to shift 
to a forward reaction to help balance that out. So it kind of shifts over to balance out the amount of stuff on both sides. So however you um, affect this, it is going to shift. So if you have too much on one side, it's going to shift away. If you have too little on one side, it's going to shift towards that. So 40 says what? So when we increase, um, it goes to, um, so when you increase the concentration, it will um, shift away. And if you decrease, it will shift towards. Okay, the next one is 41 through 42. So this is temperature. So increasing the temperature will of course cause a reaction as well. It will shift in the direction that will absorb heat. So of course, once again, it will shift in a way that will reduce stress. So if we have too much heat on one side, it's too hot, it's going to shift away. And if we have too little heat, it's going to shift towards. Right, so here, uh, so there's a lot of heat over here. To overcome the heat, it will shift the reaction in a backwards direction. So that means it's going to shift this way, this arrow. <clears throat> I don't know why they have the color, because it looks a little confusing. Um, but since we have all this heat, it gets too hot. It's upsetting the um, equilibrium. So it's going to shift away to kind of cool things off, bring some of that heat to the other side to help balance that out. So if, for example, we added heat on this side, then it's going to shift away to kind of help level out that heat. So that's kind of what's going on there. Uh, so if we increase the temperature, it's going to shift away. And if we decrease this temperature, it's going to shift towards, just like we saw with concentration. It's the same exact thing. I mean, just think when you're outside in the summer, it is really hot. So to maintain that equilibrium inside of you, you go away from the heat. You go inside of a building or something. Or if you live somewhere cold and uh, there's not enough heat to re, you know, return that equilibrium to your body of not having goosebumps and everything, you're going to get away from the cold, right? You're going to uh, want to add heat to the cold to make yourself warmer. So you increase the temperature, it's going to shift away. And if you decrease the temperature, that heat is going to shift towards that decreased side to maintain equilibrium. Continuing on with uh, pressure, the same exact concept as we've seen with the temperature and with the concentration. Uh, so we have 43 and 44. So if there's an unequal amount, obviously it's going to shift in a way to maintain that balance. So if we have too much pressure, it's going to shift the equilibrium towards uh, the less pressurized side. And if we have a decrease in temperature, um, it's going to want to take some of that pressure. So it's going to shift um, to get more of that pressure. So it's the same exact idea, like I said, with concentration and pressure. <clears throat> so if you have too much pressure, it's going to shift away. And if you don't have enough pressure, it's going to shift towards the side that has more pressure because it wants to maintain that equilibrium. And of course, we have the last thing uh, we'll talk about is 45. Catalysts actually do not affect the equilibrium at all. They just speed up the reaction. They speed up the rate uh, forward and reverse equally. They don't affect the temperature, concentration, um, or pressure. They are just kind of like a secondary thing on the side. They do not affect the rate of reaction. So do keep that in mind because I can almost guarantee that's going to be on your test. Um, the question of how will catalysts affect equilibrium, it doesn't affect it. All right, so there you go. There is Le Chatelier Principle. I'm also gonna post a video to go along with it. Good old Professor Dave. And then, um, yeah, have a good day.